Hello, Atmore. It's the Lauren and Friends Show. And now here's your host, Lloyd Alberton. And here we are once again. This is Lloyd Albritton, and the show is Lloyd and Friends. Uh, It should be at this uh, airing right at 10 o'clock on your radio dial, 93.5 WGYJ-LP radio station, founded by the Gaiman family. By the way, uh, Marty uh, and his uh, his good wife, now now passed, Vernie, Vernie, is that correct? That's right. And uh, his son's... uh, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Jerry. Uh, uh, Jerry. Listen. Yeah, Jerry uh, uh, and David. Jerry and David. Dale. And Dale, who's yeah. who's a past but had a big part. Uh, he was quite the technologist, I understand. Yep. Maybe we'll talk about him a little bit. But in any event, uh, it's kind of a rare opportunity here. We're talking to Marty Gaiman. Uh, Martin Gaiman, I guess, to friends, Marty. That's what uh, Mama Most- had me to That's be called Mama Martin Marty. after her, her brother. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Marty Gaiman has been around this town for a long time. Right. He's uh, 85? Uh, He's 85 well, let's years see. I've old. been around here for 60, going on 68 years. This, this July, uh, June will be 68 years. 68 years. You are 85. And I'm 80, 85. He's 85 now. And uh, most people in Atmore know Marty Gaiman, but maybe, I'm thinking, maybe they don't know him. Uh, <laughs> they know about him. They know who he is. But uh, he's a very interesting character. Now, Marty, you didn't come from Atmore. Nope. Uh, you grew up somewhere else. You got that accent. I call it the I, Mennonite accent. Yep, yep. Got I the got Mennonite the Yankee accent. accent. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pennsylvania du- Dutch. Pennsylvania Dutch, that's where you grew up. Yep, yep. It can Dutch sprouts the glade bissel net so feel. Where, uh, <laughs> until what age? When did you leave Pennsylvania and come to Alabama? Uh, I came in 1954. I was uh, in uh, Virginia at our church's uh, college, Eastern Mennonite College, and uh, I volunteered. Uh, the Mennonite Church had a program for the young people that uh, they could volunteer to go into service. And I volunteered, didn't know where I'd go, but uh, when I got done with school, uh, they sent me to Alabama. <laughs> so this was part, uh, they sent you to Alabama as right. part of your uh, mission. Right. Uh, back project. in those days, uh, we had uh, summer Bible school used that a lot, uh, a two-week schooling, and uh, I was involved in that at uh, different places. I first was in the Bruton area, and the last school I came to was at uh, Porch, amongst the Creek Indian there, and uh, the family that was opening up the work for the Mennonite Church uh, there in Porch, the David Weaver family, I lived with them. And uh, then he begged me to stay on after my term was fulfilled. He needed help on the farm. And uh, so I went home, got my car, came back to Alabama, and here I am. <laughs> you were just uh, 19 years old then. Yeah. 1954, that would have put right. you right about 19, 19 years old. Single guy, looking for a wife probably. Maybe. Yeah, yep, and I bumped into one. And you one. found one. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you uh, find? Oh. Uh, yeah, her name was uh, Verley Barnhill. Uh, folk know the Barnhills real good. She was uh, Barnhill, okay. Yeah, her mother was a uh, genuine Porch Creek Indian, and a very, I'm telling you, a very interesting lady. And uh, so I, um, I got introduced to the Indian pe- people, and I got me an Indian squaw. <laughs> well, she was a, you got a you got a uh, a princess too because I I've seen all the pictures and I've seen I've, I know your wife she was she's a very beautiful girl yep yep and uh, beautiful well, in the character too uh-huh. that that was the thing that uh, attracted me uh, her beautiful character 
Well, did you have to fight any of those Indian boys off out there, and did you get beat up a couple of times? Or uh, yeah, you can't get yeah. away with a pretty girl going possi- into the village and getting the prettiest girl in town. <laughs> that was a possibility. I think uh, one guy had his eyes anyhow on her. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> okay. she was very— I knew there was more to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was very captive. And uh, uh, well, the first time I saw her— uh, we would pick up people to carry to church back in the 50s. Uh, the, not, not many of the families had cars. And the only way to church, we went and picked them up. I'd make maybe three, four runs a Sunday morning to uh, get folk out to church. And it so happened uh, that uh, Vernie came to a family that we'd pick up, and uh, she, w- she was there. Uh, her brother was over in Vietnam. And uh, he had sent her a jacket that had a great big red dragon on its back. And I saw her up on the porch, and I, whoo, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I soon found out. <laughs> you know, I have some barn hills in my family. I have a, a, my father's sister, uh, my Aunt Yvonne, right. married Luther Barnhill. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it, yeah. Luther was a a great guitar player. He was, yeah. He yeah. was he was quite a character, yeah. And he could he, 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 was, he was interesting. He was an interesting guy. He sure was. The Barnhill family. Uh, so uh, here you are out here in Porch, and um, did you get homesick? I mean, you, did you ever think about going back to Pennsylvania? Uh, okay, my dad and mother uh, left me when I was a boy of eight. Okay. Uh, well, mother died when I was seven. Uh, Daddy. A mother had cancer, and uh, I was the youngest. I would have been uh, seven years old at that point. Okay. Then a year later, a heart attack got my daddy. So by nine, yeah, last part of my eight, I was an orphan boy. You'd already gotten past that part yep. of it. You'd found a new home, kind of, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Right now, we're uh, uh, itching to start moving in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, Marty, uh, you know, the Gaiman name in Atmore is kind of associated with the uh, PCI, with the Indians, although you're not Indian, you, but that was your wife. Right. It was a Barnhill. Yep. And that goes to, back to the McGee's, right? Right. Her, her uh, again, another connection, uh, my, my, other, my father's other sister was married to Lindsay McGee. Okay. And yep. uh, I think that Lindsay would have was been her Bernie's uncle. uncle. That was been Vernie's uncle. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He so. was the youngest of that. Uh, oh, let me get the. <laughs> well, I'm having that senior mental block. <laughs> yes. But uh, of the, uh, I want to say Will McGee, but I'm wrong. It's uh, his brother. Uh, yeah, I know. Lynn. Lynn, Lynn McGee. McGee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's McGee. who it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Marty, what did you, you're out here in Porch, uh, there's never been a lot of uh, industry in Atmore. It's always people had to hard scrabble and, and find a way to make a living. What did you do for a living uh, from okay, that point I, after you finished up with your? Yeah, I lived in with the David Weaver family. Okay. Uh, David and Ada Weaver uh, started the Mennonite Church there at Porch. Uh, that would have been uh, around 1950. Uh, 1951, somewhere in there. I came in 54. And um, so he he farmed, and his uh, children were young, uh, and uh, they couldn't <coughs> handle, you know, like uh, running a combine with a tractor and I hear you. stuff okay. like that. So when I volunteered, I came down uh, for an eight-week period uh, for different Bible schools, and I, uh, David Weaver came and asked me to help them in the, the last Bible school that we'd have that year, and I did, and then he begged me to stay on. Uh, they had a, uh, uh, it's really a two-car garage with two bedrooms on the side. I lived in one of those bedrooms, Okay. and uh, I, I went back, and I, I had a car. My sister uh, was... Uh, in college and she had the car and I picked up my car and drove all the way back to Alabama by myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Now how long was it before you met Vernie and you guys got married and got your own uh, uh, It was uh, house. close to not quite a year. Just a year uh, or so. Okay. She, uh, 
heard about this Yankee boy. Uh, I think that's what they called me. Oh, you the Yankee boy, okay. <laughs> and she said the, the girls at high school would go on about different of the boys. And uh, there was a young lady there that uh, knew me. And uh, she would always say, well, you go ahead and have all those boys. I'm going to get Marty. And uh, this thing of her saying, I'm going to get Marty, intrigued Vernie. And she wanted to find out about this uh, Yankee boy called Marty. And uh, so uh, uh, she, the, her daddy owned some property that had an old house on, and Jose Presley family was living in that house. We'd pick them up for church. And lo and behold, uh, she's on the porch one Sunday morning with that uh, jacket on that had a great big red dragon on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and she came down off of the porch and got in the front seat and Whoa. sit right aside him. Dear Lord, <laughs> I, I think there's a dent yet in the door where I'd crawl over. <laughs> uh, she but was loaded I, for you. I, I took notice that, uh, well, there was just, uh, uh, this is crazy. Uh, something in me was saying, there she is. Uh, there's your wife. I mean, uh, that, and wait a minute. Well, number one, she, she, at that point, she wasn't a Mennonite, and we were strongly taught Mennonites marry Mennonites. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> well, I guess that's true with most denominations. You, you marry, but, uh, yeah, it's a uh, stumbling block. <laughs> and uh, that rocked on for a while, and then one time uh, I had got uh, young people's gatherings going, and... Uh, over the Mennonite churches that were scattered in South Alabama. We'd go from one church to another every Saturday night, had young people's meeting. One of those young people's meeting uh, while we were going home, uh, Vernie somehow or another got in the back seat, but uh, she piped up and said, don't you Mennonites believe in dating? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was a pure giveaway. <laughs> I doubt whether it was a month till we were dating. <laughs> Really, <laughs> and uh, you know, I had, uh, I had. Uh, well, it sounds like love at first sight to me, uh, pretty much. Uh, but I'm sure that evolved, and you guys got married. And yep. uh, tell me about you. You know, you started to have children. Who's your old? Who was the old? Dale was the oldest, wasn't he? Yes, our Dale uh, came yeah, along. Uh, matter of fact, we were living in Pennsylvania. We had went up to Pennsylvania for her to uh, live amongst my people and get a little idea of how I was raised. And <laughs> wow, that was sort of strategic. Was that by accident, or was that just, you sat down and talked about it and said you need to go well, uh, uh, find out things, what it's like? The jobs were scarce. Uh, that, that would have been uh, uh, 56, 1955, 56. Mm -hmm. Jobs were scarce around here. I did uh, different. Uh, I worked in the woods paper wooding mm -hmm. and stuff like that, pick up anything that we could pick up. Uh, my brother uh, lived in a, um, well, matter of fact, the carpet factory that came here came from that town, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And okay. uh, they, they also had a rubber factory that uh, made tires mm -hmm. and different uh, things. And uh, he found out that there was a job and that, that's what uh, in a reality took us to PA. I was I was promised a good job, okay. good paying job. Okay. But at the same time, it gave Vernie an opportunity to get acquainted I with you. my people. Yeah. And, and that uh, was quite a bit an experience for her, I suppose. That was a world of difference. Oh, she loved it. Uh, I had two aunts yet living. My dad's two sisters, and uh, they were in the what we called the horse and buggy Mennonite people. And uh, Vernie loved to go there. Well, she begged to go there every, every weekend almost. And they loved her. Here, here's an Indian girl that they're having in their home. Boy, <laughs> it was as much fascination to them as it was to Vernie. Did, did they have the uh, 1956, you said it was about? Yeah, yeah. Did, did they have the sort of built-in, any prejudices about the Indians in addition to your new, you know, uh, Marty's new wife, yeah. let's check her out. Was there any built-in animosities about the Indians as well that no. she had to contend uh, there, with? No, there was a fascination. 
Fascination, yeah. okay. Uh, that, I, I grew up as a boy with a fascination. Uh, our area of Pennsylvania, the Sealands Grove area, was a strong, um, uh, back in early history, the, um, I'll get them, the Susquehannas mm -hmm. was a tribe that dominated that area. There was a lot of uh, incidences that happened as the white moved into their property. There, there's a beautiful valley uh, for farms. It is fantastic. And uh, of course, uh, that brought conflict. And mother would read the book about that. And uh, then uh, on, another interesting note later on, I bumped into this. Uh, west of us, there's a mountain range, the Tuscarora mountain range has stones, flat stones, laid up one side and down the other side. The Iroquois from the west were planning an attack on the Susquehanna. They were enemies. And they had those stones there so their warriors could quickly go up and down and launch a surprise attack on the Susquehannas. Well, the done. Susquehannas found out about it. <laughs> and routed the Iroquois, they had to flee to the west, which they did. Uh, that, that story was in the book. Uh -huh. And uh, later on, I read it in a paper that I got from Pennsylvania uh, of the history right. of the area. Right. And uh, <laughs> now, so we had that history. Right. Now, Marty, uh, it wasn't just your mom and dad that had to get used to Vernie, but you had quite a few siblings too, didn't you? Like, Eight or ten or fifteen or something. I was the eighth, large family. eighth child. You were the yep. eighth child. Yep. So you had some mostly brothers or mixed brothers yep. and sisters. I, I, I always had to sit. We had a big long bench at the back side of the kitchen table, and I always had to sit in the center. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but. Uh, you know, my uh, um, just reminds me of a story, and I have to be careful that I don't steal your stories because I, I get into mine real quick. <laughs> but it reminds me, my mother was an only child, and uh, she was a Tullis. Uh, in fact, she was, uh, you probably know, Os Ossie Tullis. Uh, she was uh, uh, daughter of Press Tullis, brother of Vote Tullis, oh, okay. who married Florence Walker. Yeah. Okay. So I often joke, uh, we call him Leon, Eddie, you know, they're right. associated with the Indians. We lived across the cow pasture from them, and How we were telling us this too, but we just weren't Indian. <laughs> sort of like the Gaymans, you know. How about that? <laughs> uh, but anyway, we were, uh, uh, Eddie was my mother's first cousin, which I guess uh, would make him my first cousin. Well, we well. But anyway, going back, my mother, during the war, went to live with my father, who had seven sisters. And that okay. was like holy terror for her. She said she had always been by herself, right, sitting in front of the fireplace, petting her cat. Her parents didn't talk much, and then here she was amongst this bunch of outlaw uh, <laughs> all Britain girls, you know, yeah. that like to pull pranks on her and stuff like that. <laughs> but I suppose that was that, that was quite an adjustment for Vernie to make. Absolute, yeah. Now, did uh, she have a lot of siblings as well? Did she have a lot of uh, brothers and sisters? Uh, no, she just had, uh, what, uh, three, three, four brothers. Okay, yeah. so she came yeah. from a rather small family compared to right. yours. And okay. uh, her, her brothers always were, uh, you know, running around with other guys. She didn't see much of them. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. But her and her youngest brother, they were, they were real close, Kenny and uh, Vernie. What brothers? She had five brothers. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. So uh, to kind of say focus, let's kind of jump back, jump back. I want to set that context because these dynamics make a difference in our lives. Right. These uh, sibling uh, order, you know, and so forth. But uh, so you had Dale. He was the oldest. And right. then name them. Who came, who came next? Jerry? Uh, Jerry's next. And, and then it's David. And, and then, then it's Joe. And at last I got my girl. Miss Martha. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Martha's the youngest one. Hey, there's a cute t a tab there. When we brought her home, uh, I think uh, all the Indian people were so anxious for us to have an Indian-looking child. Uh -huh. And so we had quite a lot of company. Well, the back porch was kind of the entrance, and then off to the side was our bedroom. And it, uh, 
a a lot of people would come and get kind of noisy. So I put up a sign on the door. I thought I spelled quiet. And instead of spelling quiet, please, it was quit, please. (laughs) 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 And that that, that (laughs) so happened. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but uh, Miss Martha was quite a... Uh, so addition. You had, you had how many? Five, is that four boys or four five? boys? Four boys, and the yep. baby was a girl, and the last was a girl. All right, my family is very similar. My, I had five boys, we, and then the baby was a girl. Well, 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 and Vernie's family. That that was how it was. Uh, of course, five boys, and then comes the girl. And uh, well, she had a sister that uh, died in uh, not long after she was born. Wilma was uh-huh. her name. Uh, she's buried down there at Antioch. In Antioch, okay. Yep. The, uh, That's where a lot of my family are, right? Little, Antioch, there little no grave Comas. there at Antioch. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Uh, okay, uh, Martin Gaiman, you uh, uh, you took your wife out to Pennsylvania to get her uh, to know all of your family, and then uh, things, for some reason, you decided to move back. Yeah. Homesick? Uh, her I'm mother learning? was ill. Her mother was ill, okay. And uh, so... Uh, uh, and my job was uh, planned out. <laughs> that and, happens. Uh, so uh, we came down. I didn't know what I'd do, but uh, yeah, we came back. Basically, uh, Vernie's mother was, was ill, and uh, uh, so was her grandma. So uh, there was a real pull to come back. And well, I think. No she, children at this point. No children yet. Yeah, we had uh, Dale. You had Dale. At Dale that was okay. born in Carlisle Hospital. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Away from her mama, that was tough for her. <laughs> okay. So you came back to that more. Now, were, were, uh, were you considered a, uh, you helped to begin the Gospel Light Church. That's this church right here. Right, right. Right here. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, uh, Vernie was the uh, uh, one that uh, got the church going. Okay. Uh, she had a powerful influence on her uh, uncles and aunts. And uh, at that point... Now you were the minister? Yeah. So, so yep. you were an ordained pastor. You consider yourself as far as you're as a pastor. Right, okay. right. Uh, I became now, the pastor. Now what do you pastor. call, in the minute, what do you call that pastor or reverend or... or? Uh, pastor. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I was kind of uh, self-ordained. Uh, the, the McGee family, uh, <coughs> the Lynn McGee descendants, uh, there, there was... Uh, the uncles and the aunts, and uh, they didn't uh, attend any church. They were uh, the, basically down there in pretty uh, no comas. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, we started having, well, one of the uh, nephews, one of the nieces, I guess, uh, Ver, or well, one of Vernie's cousins uh-huh. said to her, look at all these children, they're not getting to church, y'all do something. And so that word got to me, and I told her, I said, uh, you get a place, we will have services. And uh, that's what happened. We started in uh, uh, the old-timey Jim Walter home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. After uh, World War II, those were the big, big thing, uh, the Jim the, Walter homes. Uh, family, well, the oldest of Nar- Narvali McGee's, uh, let's see, was he called Junior? At, at any rate, uh, they they opened up their home, and we started having Sunday school there. And uh, then her grandma was living at what they called the old house, and uh, she wanted to have ser- so we started having services there. And from that, it went over to Rockaway Creek Road. Uh, we had an old shotgun house; they called it back in those days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We had a fireplace in the center, and I remember one winter it was really cold, and uh, that fireplace kept us warm. But ultimately, then we got uh, the Swift Mill had a um, a boarding the old boarding house. Uh, the West End or West Side Baptist Church had it, and they had built a new building, and so it was available. And right then, we happened to be living in one of Swift's houses. And so I talked to Mr. Swift to abide, and he said, yeah, you can use that building. So that's, we moved uh, having services from the shotgun house into the uh, boarding house of Swift. Well, then uh, 
uh, the folk here at uh, What Now is Gospel Light. Uh, oh, help me, Dave. Uh, the group that had this building first. Brooks Memorial. Yeah, Brooks Memorial. This was Brooks Memorial. That's uh, where we're built, sitting right now. Yeah, okay. Had built their new building, and this one was sitting empty. Well, we were <coughs> living across the street, uh, which now is a store building, and uh, uh, I got well acquainted with their good pastor, he, he was great. And uh, so when they had moved out over to the new place, he came by one day and he said, Marty, I, I see what you're doing and I admire it and uh, uh, here's a building. You, you need to have this building. I think they wanted 150,000. Well, that was a steal. That's a house, double story educational building and the sanctuary. That was a steal, but we didn't we didn't have, have a thousand, <laughs> much less a hundred and fifty of them. <laughs> and I shook my head and I said to brother, I I don't see any possibility. We're working with people that are poor. Uh, we might have a Sunday offering of twenty or twenty five dollars. <laughs> I said, How in the world can we come up with? But uh, he didn't give up. And he came back later and he said, Nah. Don't you have faith in God? And talk like that, and <laughs> kind of, kind of shame me about my faith. I hear you. Yeah. So uh, I said, "Well," he said, "I want you to do this. I want you to go to Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett was the head of the United John, uh, no, John uh, Garrett. First National Bank." Uh huh. And uh, so I did, and I found out that they would back us. Surprisingly to me. Uh, and uh, then there were some other folk that knew about us up in, uh, well, they were in Virginia. And they came up with, uh, I forget, something like 75000 So the bank didn't need to put a whole lot in. Uh, we got it for right at 100000 mm -hmm. And uh, for seven years, we worked at it. Back then, the powwow was just starting. We cooked the turkey dinners. Well, the one year we cleared over $3,000. That, that was a real shot in the arm. <laughs> but uh, that, that's how Gospel Light came. And, of course, with Vernie's uh, background, uh, her uncles and aunts knowing, and they saw the change that was in her. She, she had a terrific change. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, <laughs> frankly, she was fascinated by what she saw within the Mennonite homes. Uh, I was with, uh, we were with my two different aunts, and then we lived for a while with my brother. And she was intrigued. And in essence, this was her statement, I want my home like that. And I saw to it that we gave her that kind of home. <laughs> How about that? So uh, that was the, um, she was the mother of gospel light. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and so um, th so the church wasn't out in the porch area, but it's right here in Atmore. More, yeah, more, it, it uh, started in the uh, uh, yeah. Nokomis area in a house, mm -hmm. went to a shotgun house on Rockaway Creek in, Road that came to a Swift Mill. Uh, and, no. this to, and this to this day is a very beautiful church. Oh, my. Oh, we, 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 we thought we became millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. It was beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah, way, way beyond anything that we could even think of. Well, we'd, we'd come, one day to have special meetings. Brooks Moore would have special meetings. Uh, and I had a good relationship. Uh, his name will come to me after a while. But uh, my, him and his wife, and they had a son. So their son and our boys uh, were together a good bit. But uh, we had a good, it's a wonder I didn't become a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to love everybody, you know. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the friendship that we had. We had great friendship and uh, could sit and talk. We looked at things a little different. From my background, uh, I grew up a uh, very, very strong uh, Arminian. I don't know if you know what that means, but there's, there's the Armenian belief system, and there's the um, 
uh, Calvinist belief system. Mm -hmm. And that's a big story there, quite interesting, and I mm -hmm. studied in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so by that time, by the time uh, uh, I got acquainted with the pastor here, I, I was a, a diehard Arminian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we didn't ever see exactly I'm just going to take a wild stab here just my little bit of education Calvinism is more what is to be will be yeah. uh, predetermined or, so I will take it Armenian would be fairly the opposite free choice simply put type of Calvinism approach. says once you're saved you're always saved okay. Arminianism says no you can lose your salvation if you I get see. careless. I That's see. the difference. I see. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and it turns out to be can be quite a difference when it comes to <laughs> governing your, your life Here choices. Here I was can. dumped right into the heart of Calvinism. <laughs> 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 I've looked at it a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, Marty, across the street from where we're sitting right now, uh, there's a building over here that says Marty's Furniture. Yeah. Uh, were you in the furniture business for some time? Uh, you, yes. You have that building. Did you? That was our sure home you... for a while. Okay. Uh, we got moved in there about uh, shortly after we came back from Pennsylvania. Uh, so it would have been, uh, yeah, I think uh, 60, 61 okay. in that area that we bought. That was a, a house. Uh, we bought that and lived there. And the store got started uh, I was working at Baymanet in the furniture factory, standard furniture, and uh, I could get the um, damaged furniture at a good price, and that gave birth. I started. Oh, that's the connection. Okay. Carrying that you. furniture up here and selling it, that got us started. <laughs> of course, then I hooked up with uh, a lot of different manufacturers. Right. And uh, let's see, that would have been. Boy, let me get my dusty brain. Around 60, yeah, 64. Okay. I left Standard Furniture. I, I would work for them from 59 to 64. Okay. And um, it sort of broke off and started your own furniture store right, right over here. Yep. Okay. I, I also uh, built cabinets and uh, refinished furniture. A lot of refinished old furniture here and that more that I did. Hey, here you go, opening up a whole new book. You're a carpenter, too. Yeah. So, that was uh, just something you learned from it's, your growing up. Right. I, I had worked, uh, well, of course, the furniture works there in Bay Manette, uh gave me a inside door to furniture building. And um, uh, I had worked also for a carpenter earlier on and uh, had learned, learned a lot of things that I needed to know in carpentry. So, uh, yeah, I did... Um, uh, mainly kitchen cabinets. That was my main line. Okay. I love it. I, I, okay. Uh, so Marty Gaiman, the craftsman, and Marty Gaiman, the entrepreneur. Uh, so I guess uh, that probably explains how you ended up in the radio business. Now tell me about that. How, <laughs> that's that get going? quite, uh, yeah, quite interesting. Well, uh, th there was the family, the Menard family, that had WATM years sure, ago. Sure, sure, yeah. And uh, the next thing I knew, Ardell became interested in radio. He was in high school. Uh, he worked for the Menards. And uh, Tom got radio into my Dale's system. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, really, really, he, uh, I, I kind of got envious. Uh, uh, Tom had Dale more than I had him. <laughs> Couldn't but get him hats, out of that radio station, could you? Yep, hats off to uh, Tom and Ernestine. They were great folk, and uh, they did a Tom did a terrific job on Dale. Well, then Dale went over uh, who? Where was it? Some uh, uh, electronic school. Ozark. 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 Yeah. Ozark. And uh, of course, he he graduated from that, and he really had a handle on radio. Uh, the, then he met his wife, Darlene was from Pennsylvania. She was down here uh, in voluntary service. And uh, they got married and wound up moving to Pennsylvania. Uh, Dale got his foot in the door of FCC, the federal agency that uh, controls radio and TV, okay. and proposed to them a system that they grabbed uh, that he would go around and check the stations. Now, FCC does that. 
But if the station happened to be uh, something not in compliance, they, they could get a pretty hefty fine. Dale proposed to them that he would go around and check the stations, and uh, he would put up his uh, plaque on the wall so that when FCC came by, they, they wouldn't pay any attention. They knew that Dale had checked it out and cleared it. That's what Dale was doing, and, and he was running the eastern part of the United States, going to radio and TV stations wow. and uh, giving, them, giving them a clean bill of health. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Okay. So, but at some point, you you started your own radio station, right? Dale Dale had started Dale that, did that. Okay. Before he was married, uh, WASG uh, was on the lower end of town. Okay. Uh, well, right by the funeral home, uh, the building there, yeah. and uh, him and Jerry and Dave <laughs> uh, got that thing going. The tar was down in the swamp. <laughs> I'll never <laughs> forget. We had to lay uh, ground wires all the the whole perimeter around that tower in that swamp oh lord <laughs> that, that'll give me heartburn <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about it but uh yeah they got her going okay and uh, it run um back in those days the uh, pop and mom operations in atmore uh, the stores then came kmark and walmart and, uh, now, when Dale started this station, the Menard station, it, it, it was an AM station. Right. It had right. already gone off yep. there by that time. Right. Okay. Yep. And, and that was very popular in those days. I was just yep. a teenager, uh, but boy, yep. we hung on to every they thing that happened. They had a good show in the morning. Well, all day long. They, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they started this station, and then uh, I know there's some history to, to that. It passed out. I think, the, I think PCI bought it, didn't they? And then they sold it to... This right. other guy and something, something, something. Right, uh, the, the truck. Well, uh, we had a heavy debt load. Yeah. We were okay when uh, things were as they were when we started. But here and there, pop and mums were closing up. That was our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, it, it got down. Well, the uh, incoming, say like the, the big stores, they would do some advertising, but it wasn't regular. WASG needed regular income. So mm -hmm. the bottom line began to come up, and uh, it, it had to be sold. We, we just simply were uh, mm -hmm. pushed out uh, with the economic uh, events that transpired during that transitional period. A lot of pop and mums. Well, you had all kind of pop and mums stores on Main Street, and... Uh, that. So apparently, uh, Dale was the only son that you have that got radio in his blood a little bit. I see this guy standing over here in the control yeah. panel. Uh, <laughs> he kind of got a little radio in his blood as well. Yep, yep. he, he uh, learned it. Uh, I, I'll, I'll never forget when we were setting this up. Uh, we first set up down in the sanctuary, and uh, things weren't going too, too easy for him. And I saw him slide out and under the... Uh, table that held the machinery and he jumped up on his feet and had his fist toward heaven and said dale get down here <laughs> <laughs> i need you <laughs> <laughs> but he worked it through and uh, boy all this machinery here that's that's well, his. whose idea was that was that was that kind of a was that David, was his. The brainstorm of that or dale had broke the ice uh -huh. uh, before dale passed uh, he had, uh, FCC had opened for what the, uh, the, we call it uh, LP, low par. And uh, uh, it, it was especially for uh, uh, schools and churches and so forth. And uh, so it's uh, non-commercial. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we have to exist, try to exist with uh, people sending in offerings. Okay. That's our means of, uh, of income. Right. It uh, it can get scary, uh, scary at times. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, you, but you're... I've committed. Uh, I was able over my working years to make investments that have uh, done done me real good, and I've dedicated one of those investments uh, to pick up the bottom line. When when not enough has come in, we go to that investment and. Take so care of the bills. <laughs> reaching in your pocket for it. So, yeah. uh, it, it's it's a real joy to my heart. I'm I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do, 
and uh, I I don't uh, find that a burden at all. Um, and it's it's we we marvel. I stand back and marvel the way God blessed that investment, way beyond anything that I could could have even thought of at the time being. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, there it is, and uh, WASG gets it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it gives uh, gives you an opportunity, and uh, so, you know the things that we do that we love the most don't always uh, pay us that much. Yep. But that doesn't mean we can't do them anyway. Uh, you know, I love to write. Uh, I, I've never had, been able to quit my day job, you know, from right. <laughs> writing. But I got to do it. It's just yep. something I got to do. Yep. And you get a chance to uh, uh, preach and teach, right? Right. Uh, with yep. this uh, obvious breadth of knowledge that you have, uh, I mean, why do you want to put your bushel under a light, uh, uh, put a bushel over your light, or yeah. whatever? Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to, to do yep. that. Uh, it, uh, Does it keep uh, your mind sharp as well, being able to have a forum for... Yeah, I, I, I enjoy preaching. I, I love it. Teaching, preaching, is, it's right down my road. And, um, of course, that goes back to my schooling days. And uh, early on, well, I, I knew that uh, God's hand was on my life. As a boy of 16, I surrendered to the Lord. And uh, I didn't know what all the out ahead but as i look back over the history <laughs> i'm shot and happy and uh and i i i've been able to do uh what as as a, a born again christian what what hit my heart i'm i'm now doing because i would uh different times i remember uh back uh that i would say uh ooh, i i want to get the gospel outside these walls here I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it's marvelous. We have, uh, we're on the World Wide Web, means that uh, we, we get letters from other countries, mm-hmm. people, people listening. And uh, we'll be, I have uh, kin people up in Pennsylvania. They're probably listening to this. <laughs> so, I was, I was going to allude back to that, that your Pennsylvania kin. They're still yep. out there following what you're doing. A dear friend yeah. out in Ohio. I uh, said, uh, I want to hear you guys. Well, it's, it's one of the sons of the weavers that I lived with. He's like my brother. And uh, he said, I, w- I want to hear this. So he got the equipment for us to be on the WWW, the World Wide Web. And uh, now he's listening to us. <laughs> so, well, it's a wonderful thing, uh, the technology that we yep. have now there's a lot of absolutely a lot of bad things happen and we hear mostly the bad things yeah to talk yep. about it but uh, what you're talking about is one of the good things oh hey uh, we, we, we just thrill the privilege to uh, uh lift up jesus and to give his name to the world and know that what he done for us on the cross is for the entire world we're just telling the world what he done <laughs> right. and and here we have uh have that privilege. It uh, it's very humbling to uh, think of what God dumped in our lap. Uh, the, the different different things that happened. Uh, let me give you this one. Uh, when when uh, this was in its birth stage, uh, we had to get the antenna uh, up on a pole. Don't you know the light company volunteered, went up and got the pole, came down and set the pole up for us. With the antenna on the top. Southern Pine Electric Co-op. Yep. Southern Pine Thanks Electric Co-op. Thanks to Southern Pine that. Electric Co-op. And it's one And, and that was thing. just a charitable, uh, corporate charita- yep. charity. Yep. They did That's it one. without a dime, didn't ask for a dime, and did it good. It's, it's right there. <laughs> we <clears> wish <throat> it could have been higher, but uh, that was as high a pole as we could, they could get a hold of. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, one miracle after another. And, uh, hey, when uh, things kind of get a little tight and we're saying, ooh, here, well, you, you, there's, there's a lot of bills that don't, uh, the public aren't aware of. We, we got to pay to play music. We've got to buy a license. Right. We have several licenses that we have to buy. Um, then, of course, there's insurance and Oh, uh, the thing goes. If if a computer goes down, hey, we're looking at uh, three and four thousand dollars. I mean, stuff like that. 
uh, that if it wouldn't be for our faith in God, I, I, I wouldn't want to be here. <laughs> it's, it's God. We, we knew from the very start this, this was God's doing. And uh, hey, like the book says, God cannot fail. And so we're, we're a whole of something that, uh, hey, we, we can trust. Yeah, when the ice storms are, are blowing, <laughs> we can trust he's there. Yeah. You know, um, I, I ponder on that subject of faith a lot because I depend on it a lot. Right. Uh, but faith is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting concept. Uh, the act of faith, for example, take uh, when when Jesus, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not melted, but withered the fig tree, right? right. Or when he raised the uh, the guy that couldn't walk, and they said, "Hey, how come these other guys couldn't do this?" You know, well, they didn't have enough faith, or some things through fasting and so forth. But the the act of faith itself, you, you can't pretend to have faith and have the same effect. That's it. You have to actually have the faith. Yep. And then yep. miracles happen. Uh, you know, faith precedes the miracle. Yeah. So you, and that has to do with you just don't know. If you yeah. knew, it wouldn't be faith, would it? <laughs> Stepping out. Stepping out. Uh, is yeah. a, uh, uh, it can be a scary, scary thing. Absolutely. And, and it, uh, I think in my case, our stepping out in this, uh, believing God, merely verified to my heart what God had done when I was a 16-year-old boy. It, it verified. It gave me a, 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 hey, the same God that changed my heart. <laughs> he has changed so many things. I saw him change my wife. I saw him change my wife's people. Uh, and, and I'll never forget a Sunday morning. When a guy, her one uncle, came running in before the service, and uh, he cried out. He said, "I'm lost! I'm lost!" And he went right to the altar, and there poured his heart out to God. Mm -hmm. What had happened? Saturday night he was out with uh, his honky tonkin and all that's involved in that kind of a lifestyle. And his testimony was that it seemed like somebody had sat on his shoulder and whispered into his ear, called his name, and said, you'd better let this be the last time. What? Scared him to death. He was all the way over New Orleans. He drove and got here before the service Sunday morning and was down at the altar and had prayed through before the service started. <laughs> never, never, ever went into that lifestyle. How about that? From that day to the day he died, he was faithful to the Lord. Well, that's wonderful. Boy, now, when you go through stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you seem to be um, in pretty good uh, uh, physical health. I'm great. Yep. Um, you're not in a wheelchair. You got, you got your limbs. You're able to be mobile, and you got your mind. You're obviously... Uh, yep. Um, yep. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Well, uh, radio will be a big part. Uh uh, I am not quite sure now that wife is gone. Uh, I have a big question mark as to the future of Gospel Light. That's, that's right now f at my front door. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're praying. Uh, we're seeking God to give us definite guidance. And um, so uh, wh whatever door opens up, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I've left the Lord know that uh, here I am. <laughs> And uh, just uh, lay it out. I'll I'll do what I can do. But uh, yeah, we're right now, uh, wife. I was hoping so much that she would uh, have a little bit longer life. Uh, we are building a house, and uh, uh, I was hoping that that would uh, kind of captivate her. I knew that her fa her heart was failing. Mm -hmm. And the doc shook their head and said they, they had done what they could do. But uh, she was going down. And um, I'm not sure all the reasons, but uh, at any rate, she's gone now. And uh, the house is just about ready. So I'll be moving in. Uh, I wish so much I had her to <laughs> say, put the sofa there and put that table <laughs> over there and hang that picture on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I understand. I understand. So I've I've got a I've got a, a load on my hands, but I got a daughter, and. Uh, uh, well, I'm, you know, you know, you've got you got a daughter, and you got uh, you have two sons left, you right? Know, Adele that passed away, and uh, these boys obviously love you a lot. I, oh my, I, I oh see my. them around town with you, taking you, and, and when your wife yep. is here, yep. taking you guys out to eat, and uh, I can right just tell there. how dutiful your sons are with you. Yep. How do you raise children like that? Did you do something special? I would say it's the Bible. Uh, we had Bible morning and evening. Uh, I love my memory. I go back in memory of the evenings where my little boys would crowd around me. And uh, we, we had a library of uh, Bible storybooks. And I would read to them a story or tell them a story. And uh, grew up that way. Well, Dale, uh, at a very young age, took to the piano. And uh, it wasn't long until he had some songs that we, we would gather around as a family and, and sing in the evening. So I, I would say that um, the boys are what they are, what we put into them. Right. And we put God into their lives. And the morning and evening, uh, they, they knew that uh, uh, we depended on God for health. Uh, yeah, we depended on God for wealth. <laughs> health and wealth came from God. Yeah. And... Uh, they, they grew up with a firm faith. They saw God time, oh my, time after time after time. Uh, there was no other way. That was God doing this and doing that. And mm -hmm. uh, different incidences happened uh, in our life journey back then that uh, introduced the boys to a, a real God. That, I think that's it. God was real to them. Mm hmm and uh, and this goes right on down the line, doesn't it? I don't know. Yep. Uh, I know. Uh, I, I know. No, no, know them well, but I know David. You have what two daughters? I think David has two daughters. Yeah, four, you, four. You know, four, four, <laughs> four, and I think they've all been to university. Yep. Al Alabama. Yep. Or, yep. <laughs> yep. Alabama. Yeah, oh, it had to be Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure what they're doing, but I, I know who those girls are. You know, uh, you don't always know who knows who you are, but yep. people. Yep. People are watching, you know. Yes. And yes. when I know Marty Gaiman, you know, I know. Okay, David is his son. Is he? Is is he like? Mar is he behaving? Is he of the same character? And then you see David's girls, and you know, yeah. I'm sure he tells them when they go off to university. Look, you're carrying the family name here. That's it. Be careful it. what you do. Yeah. And, th and that's yep. what my father always said. There were five boys in my family. We were always going out and getting into some oh, kind sure. of meanness. <laughs> and uh, he would warn us, look, uh, you know, I don't want this coming back to me. This is a family name here. Uh, my father, my exactly. grandfather. Exactly. And you, yep. it's not just you. Yep. And so you instill yep. in your children and your grandchildren to carry that name. It's like the name of Jesus Christ, yep. really. Yep. You know, if you're a yep. Christian, yep. it's not just you. It's the stain that you put on they're, they're, they're in lazy secret, and uh, I think that the greatest need that America has, has a lot of needs, but the greatest need is within the home, uh, that the Bible has a prominent, prominent place in the home, and when children hear God's word, uh, we heard it when I was a boy in, in the state school, mind you, her name was Priscilla Rao, and the first thing she done she reached over in the one side of that desk there was a bible and she would read the bible to us children in the state school christmas time came we memorized the christmas story yeah and the the state the program of christmas in the state school was all about the bible that was only back in 1940 that ain't so far off it's not so far so off. what's happened today that that uh, I, I think of that the boys and girls in the Kant School, that was a red brick, one-room schoolhouse with eight grades. <laughs> if they didn't get the Bible at home, they got it at school. That ain't true today. And uh, we're, 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 I say that the problems on our street go to that factor, that in the home, the Bible it has become a silent book, and we're hurting. We're hurting bad because of that. Yeah. <laughs> that, 
simple solution maybe, but that's, that's to me the very bottom of the ills of America mm -hmm. and the, the uh, awful stuff that's being happening and the hatred that you hear oozing out of government quarters even against our country. Uh, how sad. And I think that, well, I not think, I know the answer is a turning back to God. That will happen first in the home. When it happens in the home, then it's going to happen in the community. It's going to happen in the school. It's going to happen everywhere. The home is the answer. And uh, my yearn, uh, my, my drive for radio, my willingness to, to give and uh, whatever, whatever it takes to keep the lights on and the airwaves full of gospel, <laughs> I'm, I'm given. I'm given to that. Because I believe that is what's going to save America. That, that, that factor of people coming front to front with God and being aware that uh, God loves them, cares about them, and that he's available to uh, meet whatever individual's needs are. <laughs> that's, a great, uh, that's a great testimony, uh, Marty. And uh, for those of you who are listening... Uh, uh, if you have a little extra money laying around uh, that you want to do something good, this would be a good cause. Uh, you know, my <laughs> wife and I, uh, of course, I hardly ever, ever, every now and then, now I shouldn't confess this, that I might have bought a lottery ticket every now and then because <laughs> I'm not in the game. <laughs> but every now and then when I think about buying a lottery ticket, yeah. my wife and I say, oh, what would you do if you had the lot? Yeah, if you had yeah. 100 million, what would you do with it? <laughs> and uh, we often think of, I'm sure everybody has these conversations, you know, but, uh, well, uh, you know, I had that Gecko Club in there. Well, I'd give them some money. You know, I'd, I, I like this. I, yep. I'd, I'd give them some money. So, you know, sometimes we can't. We don't have it. Yep. But yep. sometimes we can. Right. And, and little bits help. And this is one of those good at more causes right here. Amen. This Amen. Is, this Where? is one of the good causes. Uh, it's 24-7 gospel music. Uh, you've heard Marty Gaiman, and uh, you hear his sons, uh, David and, yep, and they're uh, all bored. Jerry, every, every morning. <laughs> And they're all great guys. The Gaiman family is a great family, and this is a great cause. So if you have a little extra laying around, uh, don't hesitate. You know, Man, appreciate it. it. Give it. Well, this has been the Lloyd and Friends Show. I think we're just about out of time. We've got a uh, David's over here waving at me with two fingers. I think that means two minutes. I could go on we're for probably days down to and one days. minute now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Marty, I appreciate you taking the time. And again, I want to emphasize that any opinions on this show, this is a show about individuals this is not about your politics or my politics right. or your religion or my religion yep. uh it's not, the opinions expressed here are the opinions of the person on the show and and that's what makes the person who he or she yep. is so uh marty gaiman is uh he's a mennonite and proud of it and uh his beliefs are consistent with most of us here in atmore faith in yep. jesus christ so uh marty i appreciate you being on I, I i'm i'm sure that your words of wisdom and your life has is going to inspire somebody uh, to change. Thank you, brother. I, I, I've appreciated the opportunity, and uh, I, I'm aware that uh, there would be a, a lot of that more people that don't know about my background, uh, don't know what uh, produced a guy like this. <laughs> that's, that's what we're all wondering about. <laughs> and we haven't found out everything, but uh, we have found out a lot. Oh, Thanks, Marty. No. Thanks for listening to the Lloyd and Friends Show with Lloyd Overton.